Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this talk and uh, I am uh, Professor Sanjeev Sambandhan who will be making the presentation. Uh, so this talk is about our recent work uh, towards the self-healing of thin film transistor circuits and in particular uh, this work concerns self-healing of printed electronics uh, where if a circuit has an open circuit fault uh, then we have a mechanism on board which would automatically detect this fault and heal it. So I'll give a brief description of what we have done and what the key results are. So firstly, um, you know, thin film transistor circuits, particularly on large area substrates, uh, be it printed or uh, deposited by other means, uh, are subject to several reliability problems. And uh, this is largely due to several factors. The first is mechanical stress. You have bending and stretching of the substrate. Uh, particularly if you're thinking of wearable electronics where you have uh, these thin film substrates, uh, they undergo extreme uh, stress. Uh, the second is electrical stress, and this is largely due to le electrostatic discharge and electromigration. Uh, not so much electromigration, but electrostatic discharge definitely. Uh, and this is again uh, quite key when it comes to uh, technology such as uh, wearable electronics. And then you have environmental stress that is due to corrosion, due to moisture, uh, or, you know, suppose again, when you're talking about wearable electronics, uh, the systems would be exposed to uh, sweat uh, and uh, probably wash dry cycles, etc. So due to all these factors, open circuit falls are quite prevalent and, uh, uh, you know, we have to address them in some manner or the other. So in, a, in order to answer concern or to respond to this concern, uh, there have been several technologies. Okay? The first and the most abundant, I would say, is new materials, which include stretchable conductive polymers. And uh, you find a lot of papers on uh, clever insights into material science, uh, where uh, researchers have developed uh, extremely conductive composites uh, that are also extremely stretchable. Uh, the second is to go back to your traditional interconnects such as copper uh, and try to increase the stretchability by creating uh, rounded beams. Okay, so this is going back to, you know, having your old uh, helical coils, uh, for example, in an old telephone, uh, which could stretch as much as needed. And uh, the key idea here is a rounded beam has a different stress profile and can accommodate more stretching. Uh, and finally, you have more active systems. Okay, so the problem with the previous two approaches is they are, uh, yes, they enhance stretching, but if there is a fault, there is nothing that can be done. Okay, and faults could occur due to not only mechanical stress, it could also occur due to electronics, uh, electrical stress, uh, for example, and nothing can be done in that regard. And finally, we have active systems, which are called the self-healing uh, systems, uh, wherein uh, if the interconnect experiences an open circuit fault, that's not the end of the road. Uh, the system uh, gets triggered and it would repair the interconnect in real time. And a very good example uh, is I can, uh, there are several technologies, but I would like to highlight uh, uh, one group from UIUC, which is uh, from Professor Nancy Sotos. And uh, they have developed uh, these little microcapsules uh, which contain a conductive ink. And they have demonstrated this technology for several kinds of inks. And uh, if there is a mechanical, and these microcapsules are sort of smeared over the interconnect during the fabrication process. And if there is an open circuit fault uh, due to mechanical causes, then one of these capsules would uh, end up breaking. And this, is, this happens statistically uh, because they are spread out quite uniformly over the interconnect. And they would spill the ink and they would repair the fault. So these are some of the approaches towards handling, uh, you know, open circuit faults. So here, so our own contribution towards improving the reliability of interconnects uh, in or flexible electronics has been the invention of the of a new mechanism of self healing and something that we call an the electric field assisted self healing. And this is done, or the active material here is. Uh, dispersion of tiny conductive particles dispersed in an insulating fluid, for example, copper particles in silicon oil. And what we do is we package this dispersion over all the interconnects. 
Now let us imagine a current carrying interconnect has experienced an open circuit fault. Now the moment a current carrying interconnect experiences an open circuit fault, a voltage develops across the interconnect, which means that there is now a field in this open gap. And all the tiny conductive particles sitting in this open, open gap and in its vicinity are now polarized and they all have a dipole moment. And these tiny dipoles now attract each other and form linear clusters that span this gap. And these little bridges uh, eventually center and they construct a complete heel of this open fault. Now, the big advantage of this mechanism uh, is that it firstly uses relatively common particles, right? Silicon oil and uh, let's say copper or silver particles. Uh, the second one is it's an add-on feature. It does not change the method by which you fabricate your interconnects. It does not change your regular fabrication process. You do everything that you have to do. And later on, when we decide we want to have a self-healing ability in our uh, uh, flexible electronic system, we add on this feature by you know, printing this dispersion or packaging the dispersion over the interconnects. The final and most important is that this dispersion is inherently insulated. The number of particles sitting in this dispersion uh, is far below the percolation limit. So the dispersion by, uh, by nature is not conductive. It is only when there is an open fault, these particles rush to the site and increase the concentration there, increase their own concentration there and form these linear clusters. So therefore, it is a much more relaxed constraint with regards to the packaging. It is all right if the dispersion spills over, it is not going to cause a short circuit between two interconnects. But at the same time, we do, not, we do not want the dispersion to spill over and we will discuss one of the techniques of packaging uh, towards the end of this talk. So here is a video that sort of describes the entire mechanism of self-healing and what you see are the two ends of a broken interconnect and a dispersion of 10 micron copper particles and silicon oil. And these particles, they experience the electric field, they begin interacting with each other, and they start forming bridges that sort of scribe the uh, electric field lines. Uh, and with time, you'll see that a weak current begins to flow through these bridges. And with time, these bridges would center, one of the bridges will center, uh, and the other bridges will simply dissipate away. And you see this little buzz with the other particles simply because of uh, thermal convection. And you also see the dynamics of current with time. You see this gentle increase in current initially and then a sharp uh, increase that is only limited by the compliance uh, limit of the measuring system uh, where the current sort of uh, peaks up uh, and completes the process of self-healing. So this process of self-healing is <clears throat> limited by the resistance or the, the current limit is defined by the resistance of a single bridge, uh, which in the case of 10 micron copper particles happens to be about uh, 200 to 500 ohms uh, when the length of the bridge is about 150 to 200 microns. So here we see the SCM image of the bridge uh, or the heel. And if you look at the bottom right picture, you can see this weak sintering between the two particles, uh, which is so effective in reducing the effective resistance of the heel. So what's the mechanism or what's the physics of the healing? So you have the force that governs or that drives the cell healing is the dipole-dipole attractive force between particles. And these particles that are rushing towards each other experience a viscous drag. Okay, And if you equate the Stokes drag with the dipole-dipole attractive force, we can estimate what the heel time would be. And this is quite important because it's telling me that the heel time depends on the one, depends inversely with the uh, radius of the particle and it's the radius of the particle to the power phi and it also depends inversely with the electric field so if i increase electric field the heel time would decrease uh, expectedly so because you're increasing the dipole dipole attractive force but if you reduce the 
size of the particle, uh, the dipole moment scales as the volume of the particle, and therefore the dipole-dipole attractive force reduces dramatically, and therefore you will have very little driving towards self-healing or very large heal times. So I cannot scale down the particle size uh, indefinitely. So this brings us to the challenges with regards to implementing this electric field assisted self-healing method for healing thin film transistor circuits. So what is the challenge? So the key idea is we want the dispersion to be inherently insulating. It's one of the advantages of uh, this mechanism of self-healing because it's going to help packaging, it's going to avoid crosstalk and several other aspects. So in order to do that, as my feature sizes of my electronic scales down, I need to scale down the size of my particles. So earlier on in the early demonstrations I showed, we were using uh, you know, 100 micron interconnects with gaps of 100 microns, and we were using 10 micron copper particles to perform all the healing. But now when we talk about printed electronics and thin film transistor circuits, my interconnect widths are going to reduce to about 20 to 50 micron. The gaps might be smaller, uh, perhaps 10 to 20 microns and so on. And therefore, I need to reduce the particle size of the dispersion to one tenth of what we were using earlier, which is uh, we now need to use about one micron sized particles. So what's the problem with that? The problem has got to do with this expression for heal time I showed you. We saw that the heal time is very strongly dependent on the radius of the particles. If the radius of the particles goes down, then the dipole moment decreases and the time taken for self-healing is going to increase dramatically. Therefore, the only way to counter a reduction uh, in uh, RP uh, resulting in a very large increase in heal time is by either increasing the concentration of the fluid which will change this parameter xp that you see in this expression because that's the distance between two particles or to increase the electric field. So which option do we choose? In this optimization chart, you can see the impact of both these parameters on, uh, on the performance of the electronic system. First, let's come to the electric field. So if I make my electric field extremely low, uh, then I do not have any self-healing. Okay, so that's that's not that's not something that we desire. So we want to make increase the electric field. But one limit is posed by uh, you know the maximum voltages that the TFT circuits can operate at. Okay, but even if we're to, if you were to remove that limit and continue increasing the electric field, you come to another point or another uh, another uh, constraint, and it's quite dramatic. And I can show you that in this video. There's a very large voltage across these two nodes, and you see that the self-healing happens very rapidly. But then the moment the heal is complete and the bridge is formed, a very massive current flows through this bridge and it cannot uh, sustain itself. It's going to fuse out. Okay, So I cannot increase electric field indefinitely, and it's better for me to stay within the limits of operation of my TFT circuit. So the only option I now have left is the concentration of the particles which is going to reduce uh, the distance between the particles defined by that parameter xp so in order if i increase my concentration too much then at the very extreme when i go beyond the percolation limit then i i would i would have a inherently non-insulating dispersion that's an inherently conducting dispersion and that is something we want to avoid so let us start bringing down the concentration even at concentrations that are very large and yet below the percolation limit, we have another problem and that problem is due to crosstalk. So if I have two interconnects running side by side and I have a high frequency signal, perhaps some kind of a switching going on between these two interconnects, then you would have more crosstalk because the packaging and the dispersion which has got many of these particles is going to add to better capacitive coupling. So therefore, I cannot increase my dispersion concentration uh, continuously. And if I make my dispersion concentration extremely low, I might have no self-healing at all. There may not be enough copper particles to form a bridge, for example. So there is an, a minima and you can mathematically find this minima for heal time and that occurs at an optimum dispersion concentration 
and we use that dispersion concentration to uh, create our uh, dispersion for the healing of thin film transistor circuits. And that is done by taking one micron silver particles, functionalizing them to keep stable, to make the dispersion stable and dispersing about 10 to 20 mg per ml of these in silicon oil. And with that, we, we, have, we can successfully show, demonstrate self-healing across printed interconnects in exact, using the exact same physics that we described earlier. And here are some pictures of the heal and some dynamics of the current. And we then went on to use this idea to create thin film transistor circuits by printed electronics and then we go on to show successful self-healing of thin film transistor circuits. So it's quite important as to where the fault occurs. If the fault occurs at the source end, you will achieve healing. But during the dynamics of healing, we will be experiencing the dynamics of both the gate to source voltage as well as the drain to source voltage. On the other hand, if the fault occurs at the drain terminal, then it is only the dynamics of the drain to source voltage uh, that is that matters, whereas the gate to source voltage is a constant. So, but nevertheless, in either cases, we do achieve self healing quite consistently. And with regards to amplifiers, we find that, of course, we do have self healing, but more importantly, the frequency response does not change too much. And the reason is quite simple. It's because the heel has got a very small resistance as compared to the output impedances of your thin film transistors. Finally, we come to the key aspect. How are we going to package this dispersion? Okay, so we have got this nice mechanism of self healing, etc. But how is this going to be implemented in a final, uh, you know, flexible electronic system? One option is to go to the side of microfluidics and you know create little conduits over all these interconnects and package the dispersion over all the interconnects. That might work well for low density circuits that do not have too many interconnects, but it's definitely going to be very cumbersome when it comes to high density integrated circuits. So one of the approach that we have explored is to pattern the substrate into oleophilic and oleophobic regions. And this is done using a fluorosilane layer. And once we have patterned the substrate into oleophobic and oleophilic regions, we simply spray coat or we print the dispersion all over the substrate. And the dispersion then automatically contains itself uh, towards only over the regions where the interconnects are present. And we see some pictures here. And this kind of patterning and packaging does not affect uh, the healing mechanism or the healing process. So with that, I will conclude this talk of mine. I hope all of you uh, enjoyed this. Uh, feel free to get back to me if you all have any questions. I would have loved to be there and see all of you face to face, but, uh, but do stay safe uh, and thank you very much.